Many years ago, I came across a few lines in a book that I connected with. They were, it's easy to judge, but you never know another person's heart, what gives them strength and what breaks them down. I have learned to listen more and speak less. The result has been eye-opening conversations and inspirational moments that I have shared with you right here. Hello and welcome back to my channel. It is Crystal One on One and we're on location at Le Chateau, Brasserie Belge. Now the world is mourning Kobe Bryant at the moment as well as his daughter who recently passed away in a tragic accident. And he's one of those people that people looked up to because from a very young age, from the age of six, he knew exactly what he wanted to do. That's a very rare quality. My guest today is one of those people. He knew exactly what he wanted to do from a young age too. And he is very popular in Uganda for guiding young ladies to becoming some of the most successful models in the world here from Africa, from Uganda actually. So please welcome the founder of JMM, that is Jora Muzira. Job. Job. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Thank it's you very much. It's a pleasure very, to very have nice. you, my dear. You. Man, your story. I, I am so impressed. <laughs> I hope you I are know. as impressed with yourself. I know. I'm so happy. I'm super happy where I've come from. Mm -hmm. And um, I know the journey is going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. It's still baby steps, but yeah. we're getting there. Well, for you yes. who's in it, I think you're seeing the baby steps. But the fact that you have changed so many people's lives, mm. I feel like is amazing. Amazing. Mm -hmm. So, you. Joram. Yes. You are Ugandan. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ugandan. Born, bred here in Uganda. Through and through. Yes. And I'm a cocktail though. I'm Nyankole and then um, I'm Soga as well. Okay. All my parents passed. They died in 1994 and I was very, very young. Like oh, super, dear. super young. And, um, you know, my dad comes from Busoga. Mm. Busoga region. Um, the, dis the district is called Kamuli and then the sub-county is called Luanda. Something mm -hmm. like that. Luanda. Mm -hmm. And then my mom comes from Bushenyi. She, okay. she was born and bred from Bushenyi. So, so where so did you grow up, up then? Um, we grew up in different families all together because, you know, my dad was extremely, extremely, extremely rich. Like, very, very rich. But you know these rich men that have so many wives? Like, ah, super so many so wives. Because we're very so many. many children. I think so many wives, so many children. Because I think we were like 60 something. Like some of the, you know, some of our siblings, we didn't even know them. So, because what I, yeah, it's crazy. It's <laughs> oh insane. I come from a super extended family, you know, growing up in uh, different families altogether. Because, you know, when my dad died, yes. he died in 1994, June. And then the same year, my mom died as well yes. in September. We were very young, like super young. So imagine growing up in this. Um, in this environment where everything was there because mm. our dad was super rich he was working with the UN he was mm. working with the government he was a medical doctor and um, he was very popular like okay. super super pop okay. popular but then when he died in 1994 the whole story changed yeah. because the minute he passed our mom passed as well all these different you know relative stepmoms came and took everything. they just came and took everything so imagine from riches we went to the best schools when our dad was you know mm -hmm. around but the minute he passed everything just Change. So where did we start off? I mean, which schools were you in? Um, I went to Entebbe. Um, mm -hmm. It's called um, Lake Victoria Primary School mm -hmm. in Entebbe. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was there for like pre-primary, mm -hmm. mainly like P1, P2, P3. Mm -hmm. And then in P3, um, they took me to Kamuli Boys. Kamuli Boys, it's in um, Kamuli, Kamuli mm -hmm. Boys. Then from Kamuli Boys, they took me to Mwiri Primary School. Okay. And then um, from Mwiri, that's when our dad died. Oh, right. So the minute he died, they had to like take me to the village. They had to like take us to the village. That's the whole thing. Okay. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Like so each time I think about still it. Alive at um, that point? You know, our grandma just died last year. And then our grand, our grandpa died like so many years ago. Mm -hmm. But they are the ones that literally raised us. So when they took us to the village, we're in the village for almost like three, four years. Okay. So after that, all these other relatives were like, you know what, we need to get these kids back to town. Because literally the other kids, um, the, our other siblings, they had their own mothers. They had, so. you know, we have so many different stepmoms. So they were okay. Because mm -hmm. the other thing that our dad did is that every wife, every woman that he had, he would actually construct like a house for them. Okay. So... You know, everyone make sure happy. you had a home. Exactly. I did make sure, you know, everyone had, had a home and then all that. So, you know, fast forward, they bring us back to the city. When they brought us back to the city, they had to, like, give us to different, um, you know, brothers, different brothers, so different aunties. Yeah, we were separated. Because so, on our mom's side, we are four. Okay. Before there's one called Drusilla, she's our big sister. She did Miss Uganda way back in 2002. And, you know, she was one of my biggest inspirations. Oh. Drusilla Muzira. Uh, and then... Um, 
there's Mark, then there's me. I'm the third born, and um, you know, there's the last one called Tony. So we were four. But we were so unfortunate that, you know, the time that our dad died, I mean, there was no one to like fight for us. That is why they had to take us to the village. Oh. So from the village, you know, two, three years down the road, they had to bring us back to town, but with different stepmoms altogether, different relatives altogether. Okay. Yeah. So we grew up in different families. Like this time, you're probably going to be at Auntie ABCD. This time, they're taking you to stepmom ABCD. This time, they're going to do... But, you know, I'm so happy that I had to go through all that because it taught me different life values altogether. And it taught me to be... To be more flexible to be more flexible that's mm. the other thing and it also taught me to be more patient because you're growing up in different families all together mm. that's the whole thing yeah. yeah you're right most people are cocooned and they're used that's to one it. thing and then that it's only it. when they go to school and then maybe later on university yes. and they're exposed to people from other walks of life yes oh, but still i mean that for a young person losing your siblings as well i mean yes. being separated did you I knew. finally come back together yeah we finally point? came back together at some point and because that's when when our big sister Drusilla was there mm. When um, she got done with her high school in senior six, she was like, you know what? Enough is enough. I just want all my siblings, my maternal siblings, back. So imagine at the age of 17, 18, I don't even know how she did it. She had to like, get all of us together and she was taking care of us. She took care of us for almost seven years. Oh. Almost seven years. So, yes. you know, she took us in and she was our mother. She was our everything. She was paying all this tuition. She was literally taking care of everyone. Like, did you have help from the rest of the family? Um... At some point, yes, um, because when I, I remember when I was at uni, one of my other big sisters, my step big sister, she lives in London. She's the one that used to pay for all my tuition when I was at campus. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, living here, it was Drusilla the whole time until when she got married and then we had to be independent as well. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. Well, that's nice that you finally got back together. We did. And able to we build really, on that really together. Yes. So you yeah. mentioned being in the village for like three, four years and yeah. you came back to town. And then town. we came back to town. Where did you yes. go then? Um, when we, the, our village was Bushenyi because mm -hmm. we had to go to Bushenyi and we were in Bushenyi for three years. Mm -hmm. So I started at some school called um, Bushenyi town school mm -hmm. and that's where i learned my maternal side a lot we mm. learned from young kore we learned octagura <laughs> we learned so many things and i'm so happy you know we were there we learned how to raise cows um raise like you them. might not even have had that experience <laughs> exactly that's the whole thing mm. and you know it, it also opened my mind to a different you know perception and perspective of life mm. so when we came to the t we, when we came to town um we didn't come to kampala town we had to first go to different towns altogether because then we had to go to Hoima, mm -hmm. Hoima town. Yes. It's in western Uganda, yes. So there we were living with our, you know, our stepbrother. He passed as well. It was called Dr. Moses. He passed a long time ago, 2001. Mm -hmm. So we lived there and then we studied there as well. But then when he passed, um, he passed 2001 and I was almost in my senior two, senior three. When he passed, they had to like separate us again. Because imagine now you've all come to town, you're living together with, you know, big brother and then... 2001 he dies mm -hmm. when he died they had to be like you know what i think we need to separate these kids everyone wasn't ready to take you know the entire you know yeah. burden and luggage yeah. so they separated us again and then we went <sighs> crazy like it's yeah. it makes me cry each time i remember about all those things but i'm happy we had to go through this because it has taught me how to hustle it has taught me to you know not take life for granted yeah yeah, yeah. And um, so it should be a lot tougher as well. Huh? That's the whole thing because I give my girls tough love. Mm. I've been there, I know what it means to, you know, someone pushing you like a problem. So I know what it means to push a human being because that's how they were pushing us. Mm -hmm. Most of us, like most of our relatives, most of these other steps, they actually had this whole thing of, you know, Emigugu, you know, like how you're growing up and then they just say, my name is Guguja Lini, Emiguguja ABCD, like her mom was called Lean. And, it's crazy growing up in an environment where everyone just feels like you are, you know, a burden. Mm, yeah. Yeah. But it has exactly. shaped us. Thank God, you know, after all that, the time we came to Kampala, that's the time our big sister did Miss Uganda. When she did Miss Uganda, she was like, you know what? I'm taking care of my siblings. And she was and living in Kitintale. She brought all of us to town. That was, I think, the first time we officially came to Kampala. 2000 and, um, 2002. Okay. 2002, yeah. Okay. So from 2002, we've been living in town. Okay. But at least you still had some help from the family. Um, Was it some mom's bit, side? A no, little not bit. your dad's side? To be honest, I would say no. It was Drusilla doing everything for us. Wow. Literally everything. Only my big stepsister, she's called Catherine, she mm -hmm. lives in London. Mm -hmm. She's the one that, you know, literally was paying my tuition. But yeah. then all the other things, was it, was, it was our big sister. Do you have yeah. a relationship with your dad's side of the family? Um, I would say yes, because, you know, we, we had so many uncles, but they all passed. 
imagine coming from this background of you know your dad being so rich has so many uncles and all that but literally almost all of them are gone yeah. and then on our mother's side as well like literally all of them are gone we just have one auntie present up to now and uh, you know our judge just died as well so literally from our maternal side it's just one auntie left that's a lot of yeah, yeah. Okay. And you have so many siblings as well. I mean, if you're so talking many. about that many. Like when you hear Muzira, that's when it, you know, it, it sinks up and you start to think, maybe that's my relative. Because mm. we, we, we used to meet most of these other relatives when probably someone died. Because literally when someone dies, all they all, we, we, we all have the same ancestral home. So that's when we'll meet like literally most of them and they tell you, oh, you know what? I think this is your brother. This is your sister. This is your... Um, and there's a funny, let me tell you a funny story. I was just walking through Bogolobi, there's a mall so mm -hmm. i was in that mall and then there was this lady that came chasing me mm -hmm. like running after me and she's like oh my goodness your drum yes my name is abcd i'm your sister my name is Muzi. like this is like recently <laughs> just recently <laughs> that is when it sunk in and but you know i i knew my dad i can't yeah. i'm not judging him he did the best for us he did everything but Man, life is very tough. Like life super, super tough. tough. Imagine like someone life just switches just like that's that. the whole thing. Someone just chasing you in the mall, and then they tell you, you know what? My name is ABC Dean. I am Muzira. I'm re related to ABC. And then in my heart, I'm like, okay, I think it's true. Mm. That is why, like nowadays, I'm just open to anyone just coming up and they say, oh, I think we re we relatives. <laughs> we are because we so many, like mm -hmm. so so many. You don't know all of them. That we don't know all of them. That's what we don't saying. know all of them. We know a few, wow. but then some, we really don't know most of them. But your dad is a busy guy. <laughs> he was very, very busy. Like, extremely busy. <laughs> like, woo! Very, very, okay. But he was very rich. Like, extremely rich. I mean, he would afford everything. Mm. When he was alive, everything was super. Yeah. I think if he was alive in this era, we would be having, like, loads of, you know, malls in Kampala mm -hmm. and all that. But yeah. Life. And that is life for you, though. Huh? Exactly. Things can just change just like that. Just like that. Okay, just so like so that. you're back with your sister Drusilla. Yes. And where did you go to school then? Um. So when we, we, we when we started leaving with our big sister Drusilla, I my high school, I went to different high schools altogether. Mm -hmm. The first one that I went to was Yale High School. I yes. did my S1, S2, and then after that they had to change me and take me to another school in Kampala. Here it's called. Uh, um, our Grand Memorial School, it's mm -hmm. in Bonamoya. I was there for my S3, S4. Mm -hmm. And then when I was done, I had to go back to Yale High School for my A-levels. Okay, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yale High School is in Kayunga, something like that. Mm -hmm. It used to be an international school. I don't know what happened now. And um, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I did my high school from there. Um, when I was done with high school, I had to you know, pursue my bachelor's degree in urban planning. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to do it. I really, really didn't want to do that course. But simply because my big stepsister the one who lives in london she wanted me to have a job where you know i would sit in an office i would yeah. work with diplomats i would work with you know people that matter to her life meant for you to be successful you had to be a lawyer a doctor the an engineer careers. the traditional careers that's the whole thing mm. and uh, you know i had to like just go study whatever she wanted and she was paying my tuition on time she was doing everything for me on time because by then we're leaving with drusilla drusilla is also supportive she's doing literally everything mm. and uh, so i did urban planning i hated this course with a passion oh my god because, it was, because, it was, I mean, you said everyone <laughs> in your family, everyone who knows him is not surprised that the, you are in fashion yes, right now, yes. that you are actually managing yes. models. Yes. No, I mean. Um, they're not surprised. To be honest, they're not surprised because I wish my dad was alive because I have this memory. I remember very well when we were very young, three, four years old, um, my dad used to call me out like each time. There was like fashion TV on. Each time there was like Kylie Minogue. Each time there was like Madonna. He would be like, Joram, Job, just come. Come, come and entertain us. Because I love dancing as a child. Can you, you know, model for us? Can you entertain us? Can you do A, B, C, D? And uh, I think he was very, very supportive. He really wanted me to do that because I was not the typical boy yes, that I'm going yes. to, you know, love mm -hmm. football. I detest football up to now. Mm -hmm. Like all my other, you know, relatives will be like, you know what, we're going to play football. But then I was the type of boy who wanted to, you know, organize all the little girls in the neighborhood, just get them together, make our own face of Africa, get all these girls mm -hmm. together, you know, select like our own Miss Uganda for the village, mm -hmm. get all these girls together, just do village, you know, shows. Yeah, you were actually yeah. spending time with the girls mostly. That's the thing. Like mm -hmm. I grew up with so many girls like so so many girls <laughs> extremely so many girls. like literally all the neighborhoods around had like so many so many girls and you know i think that's how that's why my 
you know, femininity side comes out so much mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. I grew up with girls so much. Yeah, but yeah. considering that we're a very traditional society, yes. that must have been a bit difficult for you. True, extremely extreme. But at the end of the day, like my dad was very supportive. Mm -hmm. Like he, he knew I loved dancing. He knew I loved fashion. He knew, like literally, I think if he was present, he would be like my number one cheerleader. To be honest, That's like really Dr. Lovely. Muzia would have been my number one cheerleader mm -hmm. right now because I remember all those Christmases that we used to have going to Lake Victoria in Entebbe and um, he would just be like, come and entertain us, come and do A, B, C, D. So I keep like most so of the time. So he could see that in you already. That's the whole mm -hmm. thing. That is why like when I look back, I'm like, maybe I was born to do this. Mm -hmm. That's the whole thing. Like literally I got to start following Naomi Campbell when I was about six, seven years old. Like I knew who Naomi was. I knew who Tara Banks was because I was watching them like. Mm -hmm. A problem on fashion TV. Okay. Naomi was. I knew who Tara Banks was because I was watching them like mm -hmm. a problem on fashion TV. Okay. Yes. And then you said Face of Africa. That kind yes. of also made it very clear for you that, that is the whole thing. Is the direction. That's for me. the direction. I was following Face of Africa like a religion, like a religion. Because even when I was when, when I was at uni, when I was at um, high school, when I was still in high school, I was the one in charge of say, you know, um, what is it called? Um, I was. I was so much involved in entertainment. Mm -hmm. I was so much involved, you know, miming. I was so much involved in, you know, getting all these girls that wanted to be models, do like Miss High School, all mm -hmm. those things. That is why, like, literally all the people that I went with in whatever at, um, in, in all these different schools altogether, they're not surprised. Like, to be honest, they're not surprised at okay. all because that was like my kind of life. Mm -hmm. yes. So by S4, you finish your exams. Yes. Uh, what did you do in your vacation? Then? In my did vacation, you it's... Did double into that then? Uh-huh. Now, th that's the thing. When I was done with my S4, I went to different agencies altogether. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a model, a fashion model. So I went to Zyper Models. I remember very well they were still on Kampala Road. Yes, yes, Kampala yes. Road. I they Zyper. were the ish. It was Zyper Models or Zyper the models. magazine as That's well. That's the whole thing. Zyper, Zyper, Zyper. So in my senior fall, I went there and uh, I remember I think there was a lady. She was called um, Ivan Babazi. I remember Ivan mm -hmm. Babazi was there. Yes. Back yes. then, she mm -hmm. was there, 2001, mm -hmm. 2000, 2000, 2001. So I went there and I wanted to be a model. I would see the Priscilla Rays. I would see all, you know, these Morris Magushas. Yes, so, yes. you know, I wanted to be a fashion model like so, but, but then it didn't happen. That's in my S4 vacation. Mm -hmm. And remember, in my S4 vacation, my big sister had just done Miss Uganda. She was very popular. Uh -huh. Drusilla Muzira. She was extremely, extremely popular. 2002, 2003, because... So were like, you trying to leverage on exactly, her relationships as well? Exactly, that's the whole thing. Uh -huh. So, like, I would tag along. I wanted to be like her. I wanted to meet all these cool people i wanted to meet like but i was so young like very very young until she was like you must first finish your high school before you do anything so i was like okay maybe let me wait so um, i had to do my senior five senior six so when i was done with senior six i was like you know what let me go back again and try okay. one more time mm -hmm. maybe i'm going to you know get a job and work as a fashion model work as a scout so even if not as a model there's something but exactly in there. something in there so done with my s6 i still go back to zyper and they said no that's the whole thing. It was very heartbreaking because I remember, you know, even there was a time I walked in and they said, um, you do have a scar yes. and maybe if we have some, if we, if we have something that needs someone a bit more strange, a little bit more mm. scary, we're going to call you up. And then I told them, guys, just put me an African woman for free. You know, like how you just go there and then you're talking to everyone's responsible and you're like, you know what? I just want to be in the magazine. I just want to, you know, like all my friends are calling me a model, but I want a certified stamp of, you know what? You, you, the model that you, everyone is saying that you are, but then they say no. no. That's the whole thing. Went mm -hmm. back to Divine, they said no. Went back to Papa, they said no. But then I told myself, you know what? Somehow, somewhere, I will get into the business. Mm -hmm. So I became a stalker. <laughs> 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 now, before we get to the stalking, you've mentioned the scar is actually very, yes. very distinct. What yes. happened? Um, it happened when I was very young, I think around four or five. My mm -hmm. big sister, Drusilla, we're very, very close. Right? <laughs> That's why I talk about her like the whole time, like super, super close. So it happened when we were in the village. That time, I think our mom was still alive. Okay. She was still alive. So we were in the village and it was one of, you know, those festive seasons and then all that. So we, we do have a lot of, you know, passion fruits. But then the hard ones, you know, the hard passion fruits, mm -hmm. not the usual passion fruits, the ones that grow on big trees. 
so she was climbing a big tree trying to have this all these passion fruits with a sickle something like a sickle but then he had a very long stick in runyankore they call it they call it oruhabio something like that so she kept like her vesting and then the whole time she's like you know what john go away this thing might fall down and hit your face but you know like how kids are she's her vesting you're just constantly you know just picking picking the the, the, the passion fruits mm -hmm. picking yeah, the passion fruits. and then out of the blue no. the thing just fell down and hit my face like so bad but i'm just so thankful that it didn't eye hit was my fine eye. yeah That's the whole thing. so after hitting my face i can't remember anything else that followed mm -hmm. like i have no memories at all <laughs> and uh, i grew up with this guy i hated it like a problem crystal mm. because i went to different all these different it, high schools if, if mm. as an adult you know scars get smaller with time That's the thing. but now, you know this adult, never goes away distinct. like it doesn't fade mm -hmm. at some point i was like maybe i should even go and do surgery like even my big sister was like you know what maybe you should just go and do surgery maybe you should but then i've learned to embrace it but i've learned to, you. It, that's the whole thing like it gives me more unique. character mm -hmm. it gives me you know it makes me more unique but then growing up i hated it because yeah. all these kids had like different stories all together some of them would just be like oh maybe he was trying to steal some meat and then they just hit him with a panga <laughs> or maybe he was trying to like jump the face and then probably you know like how kids are <laughs> yeah, they yeah. used to bully me a lot because of this yeah. but now i love kids it it's part of my identity it's part of who i am mm. and ever since i started watching you know top model america's next Top model all these reality shows i feel like everything different mm -hmm. makes you you know, super and different. the fashion industry now is changing. It's changing. That's the it's whole embracing thing. All kinds That's of. That's the whole. It's very diverse. Mm -hmm. Extremely, extremely diverse. Okay. Yes. So you tried again. Tried again. I tried like, again. That's no, you know, senior six. I tried not again. Happening. So you became a stalker. I became Who's a stalker. stalker. What, Sylvia or Um, or? exactly. <laughs> I was stalking Sylvia or Worry like a problem. But you know, back then Sylvia was, she was like the Anna Winter. Uh huh. The Anna Winter of fashion in Uganda. I, Actually, I you can't talk about fashion in Uganda. You can't. You really, really, really can't talk about fashion in Uganda and then you don't talk about Sylvia Worry. So I used to go there the whole time, but then it was very hard. You would never see her. You know, like how you go to the Vogue offices and then mm -hmm. Anna is there, but you can't see Anna. Mm -hmm. Like if you want to see so you Anna, go you go and sit like at the reception. And That's the whole thing. There. Like I'll go there the whole time and I'm like, I'm here to see Sylvia Worry. And they're like, no. <laughs> like, she's very busy. She's doing ABC. Until one day, um, there was a photographer. He's called Andre. He was working a lot oh, with yeah. African women, Andre. Mm -hmm. So Andre just told me, you know what? I think you love fashion very much. Just, just keep bringing for us girls. If you think you have an eye, like we believe you have an eye, and back then, uh, that's my Essex vacation, I'm going to start campus. Mm -hmm. So she was, um, he told me, you know what, you can just keep bringing for us girls, you can just keep, whoever you feel like has what it takes to be a model, just keep bringing them. And I was like, okay, okay. time is now. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is my time to shine. <laughs> so every tall human being that I'll see on the street, <laughs> Zyper. Every tall human being. You know what? I think you can be a model. You can be a model. ABC, you can be a model. And you know, slowly by slowly. But then when I was doing that, then I also got a job. Like my first official job was me being a waiter. Ah, okay. Exactly. That, that was, was like my first. That, mm -hmm. um, at a place called Design Agenda. It I was remember. an IPS building. Yeah. IPS building. Just below Parliament, isn't it? Yeah, just below Parliament, where um, Kenya Airways is. Mm -hmm. So that was my first job. I was super excited. They were paying us 100000 Yay. But I was so happy. You know, like you're just fresh from a six mm -hmm. and then but you get your the, own money. That's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe now I'm also going to start contributing to, you know, the family bills. I'm going to start being independent and then all that. So, you know, started off as a waiter mm -hmm. and they were paying us 100K. And that's the time, you know, the exams had to come back. Results are back. And, um, you know, st I started studying as well mm -hmm. at Macquarie University, okay. pursuing a bachelor's degree in urban planning. So you're working and studying yeah, at the same so time. Yeah, so I was working and studying at the same time. But then I was very smart at work. So 2012. Fast forward 2012, Sylvia Worry had a fashion show. Mm -hmm. It was called the Forever Love Fashion Show. Okay. Um, so I met Sylvia Worry and uh, we started talking. Mm -hmm. And Sylvia was like, you know what? I'm entrusting you with this show. It's going to be like one of my biggest, biggest shows. I want you to do the show production. I want you to do the scouting, um, developing the models, and literally just run the whole show. Really? This is me. Who and you've been doing the, the small, small the ones. The small, small ones. But the whole thing is that I was watching all these big shows. Okay. I, I'm the type of person who... So you always like, find your way backstage that's the whole to thing. see what's like, going I was on. watching all these big shows like a problem. Not even just the big shows here in Uganda. I used to watch Gucci, Versace, um, Prada, like how they do their productions, their mm -hmm. choreography. I was watching Miss World, watching Miss Universe, mm -hmm. Miss Internet. Mention it. Mm -hmm. And I used to tell myself, you know what? This is the only way I'm going to learn. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we had fashion schools here, but then we don't have fashion schools that teach that. Yeah. So I told myself, YouTube is there you know just load internet learn and learn so when Sylvia were interested in me with this show I was very nervous okay super I nervous. can imagine super because she's like you know what 
you know, it's still the way. And this is the person you've been looking up and to, this is you've the been person dying I've to been meet, and now she's giving you this? Looking up to, like a problem. Yeah. She told me, I'm strictly tall guys. But thank God, we started advertising, we did the casting, and a great model showed up. Mm -hmm. Like a lot, I think when we did that casting, we had like over 500 models show up. And we only needed 60. It was a show for 60 models, but over 500 models mm -hmm. showed up. So, you know, did the casting, did... Because I was watching Top Model. When you watch Top Model, you mm -hmm. learn all these things. You don't yeah. have to go to school, to be honest. You I, don't have I like that you're saying that, you know, information is there. It is there. Mm -hmm. That is the whole thing. You don't have to wait to say, you know what, let me go to this person to teach, to teach me. I was watching Top Model like a religion. You know, like how you just sit down and you're like, let me watch season one. I get my book, take notes. That's how I was doing it. Go in front of the mirror, practice, practice, practice. That's the way I learned. So, so you gave me the show and it was super amazing. So from that show, the models that we got, that's how I met Amito Lagum. Because mm. Amito was one of the girls that cast. And then there were other girls, Vanquisha, Anna, Adela, Sissi. So many other girls, like old, old girls that came to cast. So when they came into cast and, you know, we did the show, Sylvia was very happy with the models. The show was extremely successful, like super successful. And, you know, from that show, Sylvia was like, you know what? I'm going to keep, you know, recommending you for jobs. Okay. Like every time there's, there, there are gigs coming in, I'm going to be calling you. And then I remember 2012, still 2012 was a very big year for me. 2012, um, the editor-in-chief of Italian Vogue, mm -hmm. the lead editor, she was called um, Miss Franca Suzani. She was flying into the country and she was coming in. And then they had, um, they had like a huge part. They had like a huge met and greet at Charles Beer's house. Okay, were they so, doing a scouting? No, they weren't doing a scouting. They were just here to, like, you know, look at ethical fashion, African fashion, meet designers, uh -huh. connect, because uh -huh, Vogue uh -huh. is really, really big. Mm -hmm. And Sylvia was like, you know what, John, there's this event that is happening that I would love for you to represent me. Oh! <laughs> You're like, yes, please. I was like, yes, <laughs> like, yes, 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 yes. I'm like, boss, let's do it. Let's go. So she gave me the card, mm -hmm. dressed up so well. Because I was like, I'm representing Sylvia Way. Uh -huh. Dressed up so well. We had to go to Charles and Beer's house. There was a fashion show as well. Because mm -hmm. that show had Zenson, on, um, I think Santa as well. Uh -huh. Because they had to do something for the editor. -in so from that show, I met a designer called Adele Dijac. Okay. Adele Dijac. She does jewelry. Super, super talented. Super talented design. So from that show, I met Adele Dijac. And then Adele was like, oh my goodness. Are you the one who did Sylvia Warri's show? ABCD? Like a lot of people were asking. And Sylvia was not, you know, she wasn't the type of person who used not to like say, you know what? Maybe I brought in international people to do it. She was recommending me like her problem. Mm -hmm. Like all these jobs that were coming was like, you know what, John, there's this job. John, there's ABCD. John, ABCD. So I met Adele Dijac. And then from meeting Adele Dijac, Adele had a show that she wanted to do with Gloria Alvamuno. Mm -hmm. She called me in and then, you know, I produced the show. Mm -hmm. And, you know, from there onwards, I started meeting like so many people, meeting so many people. But you then, you know, doing your network then. That's the whole thing. But you know, like how you do all these things because of passion. Like to me, it wasn't about money. Mm -hmm. Even when I was doing Forever Love, I was not bothered. Like I, was, I wasn't even thinking about the pay. You had all, a vision and you wanted to bring that's it that's the right. whole thing i was like you know what let me just keep going let me just keep going so from that show forever love all these other girls were like you know what john why don't you start managing us like you should start you know you should start getting jobs for us because by then there wasn't have you like, seen yourself doing that because i mean you're already scouting in your own way i was scouting my own you know my biggest passion was production i love producing shows mm -hmm. love love producing shows and but i don't think people understand how important it is to have, to have a, a show producer. that is tight exactly you need a good you production need a very team. good show producer mm -hmm. good show because if you don't have one then the show is going to lag the show is going to be mm -hmm. not up to standard so mm -hmm. all these girls were like you know what john stop managing us start getting for us jobs start getting for abcd and and uh, one of the girls at Mito Lagoon was like, you know what, John, why don't you just, I mean, start. Like, just probably, you know, open up an agency, just call it drum managers models or drum model management or just call it something. Open up a Facebook page. And <laughs> it was like a joke. But then to me, I was like, you know what? And there were jobs were coming in. Like, mm. these were little jobs were coming in. Jobs are coming in. Jobs are coming in. The girls are working. So even Adele Dijak was like, you know what, John, you're very talented. Just open up an agency. Just call it drum model management. So... I, you know, everyone was just saying, draw modern management, draw modern management. I'm like, you know what? And different people were saying this. So. Exactly. Like, everyone was just saying the same thing. So I was like, you know what? Let me just open up a Facebook page. Let's just start from there. Whatever we do, we'll just keep, like, posting. So 2012, a lot happened. A lot happened. From Adele de Jacques, Mustafa Hassanali, Swahili Fashion Week, all these other shows that were happening. We were literally doing everything. Everything. And everyone was like, who's that new kid? Mm -hmm. Like, who's the new child? Who's... And, you know, 2012 is the same year. You know, I also got to meet Brenda Nanyonjo. We call her Mama, uh -huh. Brenda Nanyonjo. Yes. Because she was working at African Woman back then, yes, way, way back. Yes, yes. And she used to see me come there. Like, she used to see me come there. So, you know, 2012, she's like, you know what, John, I would like to meet you. 
went to the offices and she told me we want you to be our official scout for Miss Uganda. Okay. This is the little boy that grew up <laughs> following Miss Uganda like a religion. Like I had all these DVDs I would like you know like how you meet some of these girls on the streets and you just scream out their names, Victoria W. And they're looking at you like, Who are you? You like, I was like a stalker because I wanted it so bad. Mm -hmm. So mama calls me in, that's Brenda Nanyonja. She calls me in and she's like, you know what, John, I think you have a very great eye. Mm -hmm. We want you to start scouting for us girls. Officially 2013, we want you to be uh, you know, official scout. They gave me 2012, as you know, a try. Mm -hmm. So 2013. My God, you were busy in 2012. I was From very the busy. Sound of it, yeah. I was extremely busy. Mm -hmm. But then what I did, what I used to do with Miss Uganda is I would scout my girls ahead of time, yeah. mm -hmm. pre-train them, mm -hmm. so that by the time they say the search is on, I already have like 50 girls on standby, ready for the contest. Wow. That's what I did. Okay. So 2013, you know, 2012 was a very good year. So 2013, I became, you know, the official scout for Miss Uganda. Yeah. That's the year I had to get girls like Anita Fabiola, mm -hmm. Stella Nantumwe. Like literally out of the 22 girls that made the finals, and I remember you were the host. Yes, out of yes. the 22 girls that made it to the finals, I had like 20 girls from my camp. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at you. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. 20, like 20 girls out of the 22 girls. And it was a great year, like super, super great. And the girls loved me. I loved these girls because, you know, you know, like how you get someone when they're really raw mm -hmm. and you just, and, you build and then you up. start building them up, start building them up. And then, you know, when they didn't miss you and they were all excelling. And then after that, they've become very influential women. When I see Anita Fabiola, when I see Ella, when I see all these girls, I'm like, Oh, I think I did a great job. Yeah. Super, super great job. Mm -hmm. So 2013, I'm scouting for Miss Uganda. But then even 2013... Was this under JMM at that point? Or that was this it was kind just, of on the side? It was just me on the side. Okay. Just Jaram on the side. Because mm -hmm. back then, you know like how you start a business, a business, but then it wasn't registered. Mm -hmm. it was, but to me, it was just like, you know what? Yes, we're managing models. I didn't know the business side. I didn't know contractual sides. I didn't know like literally anything. <laughs> but then, you know, I started following up slowly by slowly. But then to me, it was just like, you know what? Let me just get the girls gigs. Okay. Oh, I'll just call the girl. There's this job, 300,000. There's this job, 200,000. Just come and work. No commission, no nothing. Because mm -hmm. me, all I wanted is to see the girls work. Yeah. So 2013, you know, I'm working with Miss Uganda. I'm doing these other jobs as well. But then still 20, 2012, 2013, I got to meet Ali Ali Bai. Mm -hmm.